In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build wooden garden boxes. We'll talk about the best kind of wood to use, the best way to construct them, and even the best way to install them. So stick around. One of the most important parts of building a wooden garden planter box is deciding what kind of wood to use. Every different species of wood has different qualities as well as different prices. I chose Eastern Red Cedar because it's plentiful where I live here in North Texas and I was able to find a local sawyer who gave me a reasonable price. It's a really beautiful red tinted wood, but just be aware that in the weather the color won't last. The wood you use will vary depending upon what wood you have access to and what your budget is, but be aware that some species of wood are more durable than others. The types of wood that are best to use for planter boxes like these are Eastern Red Cedar, Western Red Cedar, Redwood, and Douglas Fir. Other woods that would also be good to use, but maybe a bit harder to come by, are Cypress, Larch, Black Locust, or Eastern Hemlock. In fact, when I lived in Pennsylvania, I built my planter boxes there out of some cheap hemlock I bought from the Amish. If you want to check out that video, I'll leave a link. Now, I would generally avoid pine. Even though it's easy to come by, it will only last maybe three to five years, whereas woods like redwood and cedar will last 20 to 30 years. Now, treated lumber is generally okay to use with some exceptions, but honestly, it really deserves a video all its own, so I'll probably make that sometime soon. It's best to avoid pallet wood, but you can still use it in a pinch. Just check out the pallet wood videos that I've made for more information on that. Now you should always avoid using railroad ties. Railroad ties have been treated with something called creosote. It's nasty stuff and while it may be fine for landscaping, you definitely don't want to use it anywhere near where you're going food. One last thing to mention on the lumber that you use, thickness counts. The thicker the lumber is, the longer it will last. All of my boards are a full inch thick, which is good. Anything thinner than three fourths of an inch is really problematic. But go thicker if you can, to say even two, three, or four inches if you can afford it. So this video is sponsored by the lawn care company, Sunday. I was really excited when Sunday reached out to me. I've wanted to try them out for a while, mainly because when I moved from Pennsylvania to Texas, everything was different. The climate is different, the grass is different, the soil is different, and my lawn really suffered last year because I didn't know what to do to make it better. Sunday is great because they help you develop a lawn plan that is specialized to your region and your own lawn and will send you everything that you need with free shipping. In fact, one of the things that I'm most excited about is the soil analysis that they do, which will tell me what nutrients my lawn is lacking and what it needs to look its best. I just took a few samples from my yard, sent it back to them, and after they analyze it, they'll adjust my plan according to what I need and then send it to me. They even sent me some flower seeds that are already starting to sprout up. It's the perfect time of year to get started with Sunday, and so if it's something that you were interested in trying, be sure to go to getsunday.com slash DIYwithdave for 20% off a full year of lawn care. Now back to the video. I build up all of the lumber and cut it to size using a table saw, a miter saw, and an electric hand planer. I'll leave a link below to the tools and products that I use in case you wanna check them out. There are a number of different ways to build the planter boxes, but at a very basic level, you need four sides and a way to join them together. You could use brackets or other things, but I think it's best to just butt one end up to another and screw them both into a corner piece like this. I think that it's always a good idea to put some kind of sealer on your garden boxes to help them last longer. You need to be careful, however, because some stains or sealers could harm your plants. I'm using this garden bed oil. I like this stuff a lot because it mixed well with the cedar and smelled amazing, kind of like manly oranges. Other stains like raw linseed oil would also be garden safe. If I were to do it again, I would seal the outside of the boxes with something a bit more durable, which wouldn't impact the plants and would help keep that deep, rich color of the wood for longer. Now it's time to put the boxes together. I built my boxes at about 13 inches high, and that's pretty close to the minimum that you want for raised beds. You can definitely make them taller, which may be easier on your back as you garden, but just keep in mind that the taller that they are, the more wood you'll need and the more soil you'll need to fill it. And that equals money. 
Each of my planter boxes will be about eight feet wide and around two and a half feet deep. Any deeper than that and I wouldn't be able to reach the back. Now you'll notice that I'm pre-drilling all of my holes. Pilot holes are a must for soft woods that have a tendency to crack. The screws that I'm using are these outdoor decking screws. The length of the screws that you'll need will vary depending upon how thick your wood is. I found that it really helped to clamp everything together tightly as I screwed it all in. Once I had the boxes built, I dug out the outline of the boxes in the grass. I did this for two reasons. First was because the ground here isn't perfectly level, and the second was because I didn't want the grass to come up through the soil. Another thing that I did was to rig up each box to the sprinkler system. This worked really well because the sprinklers were already there and I'd have to pull them out anyway. But it did allow me to put in this watering system that would let me water the garden even if I was out of town for a few days. So it ends up being really convenient. Now it's time to fill up the garden boxes with soil. You'll notice that I've placed some cardboard boxes and branches in the bottom. You can add whatever organic material you want to to the bottom of your soil. Ultimately, as that organic material breaks down, it'll help improve the soil over time. The soil that you use for your planters is really important. You should use a rich organic soil that will drain easily. I would really avoid buying a bunch of bags of soil from the hardware store. Those can get pretty expensive when you're filling a lot of garden boxes. And you'll get a much better deal by buying it by the yard from a local distributor. I think I used a total of about three yards for the whole project. The last step is to add the top boards. These boards are not strictly necessary, but they really help finish the whole project off and will allow me to more easily attach you know, plastic or coverings in the future if I need to. There were some spots where I had to notch out the boards to fit the fence, but all in all, it was a pretty easy install. Notice again that I'm drilling pilot holes to keep the wood from splitting. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.